Alrighty, well, good morning, everybody. Uh, time once again for my pseudo cast. And to start with, um, I'm gonna try something uh, kind of different here. And so it's gonna be kind of messy because there's gonna be a lot of windows involved in this. So there's gonna be a lot of switching around, and there might be a few uh, a few fundamental errors here too that uh, might actually end up causing me to have to abandon the pseudo cast because I might have fucked up so bad. But we'll we'll find out as the uh, cast go as the cast goes along. Um, and, uh, also to start with, I'm gonna crack open a can of V8 Energy Orange Pineapple Flavor. So, get ready for some pops. Oh, and also, um, I'm gonna, ha I'm also gonna have kind of a very hard time talking to, I got a canker sore that's, uh, right, uh, right in my lower lip, and it's come to full fruition now, so it's, it's hurting, so... And this time around, I'm going to play uh, Arcana Liturgia, The Return of the Mighty King. So just keep you with the tradition of what I've been playing, some uh, old school dungeon synth. So. And uh, I've never heard of this before, so like, it, um, like I've been doing, I just grab the first thing that comes up on YouTube. Or I should say, the, the first thing that comes up that didn't come out like last week or so, because it... The, the modern self isn't really that synthy at all. Oh. Okay, so... So, I, um... Last night, I uh, finished up raiding, uh, raiding all the tables that I can get at. Raiding all the tables that I can get my hands on. Um... I was uh, going. I was on the Pinside website. For those that don't know, I had to create a brand spanking new account, and so um, I had to basically build up my database of tables. And then I had to give ratings for each one, and it, I couldn't get the full 100. I think I got like 93 or 94 or something like that. So I kind of came up short. So I was racking my brain trying to remember uh, what ones that I didn't find, but couldn't think of any any so so I got my list but but yeah I'll but yeah like I like I said I I made a I made a list I made a list of ratings like some odd years ago when I was uh, last on pin side but uh, I figured it was it's probably a good thing to do it again because I mean you know I had a you know I mean Times change, mentalities change, that kind of thing. Preferences change. So, um, my, um, my top five really didn't change much. There was like a, like maybe a position shift and I think a new table got in there, that kind of thing, so. Okay, so, but that's all squared away. Okay, so now, now for the messy part. So, I'll just go ahead and put that in the upper left. Well, I watched this, um, this really cool video that came out, like, today or yesterday or something like that but um it's it's a youtube channel called not just bikes it's about uh it was created by a city planner and um this time around he just he explained how he came to get into the city planning business and all that and and the other part of it is uh why he hates the city of houston so much and you're looking at one of the reasons why right here it's a whole lot of wasted space right here and uh, I kind of have the same thing here around where I live. There, like, there's uh, there's more space allocated to parking lots than it is to actual places of business. So yeah, it, it just. But he, but uh, he lives in a. Oh God, what's it called? What's it called? Not Holland. 
Le Netherlands. Netherlands, yeah. That's why he lives out there. But yeah, cause uh and I, I it totally slipped my mind. I should've I should have made an image or two of uh of the Netherlands. Cause yeah, that because that place is like very people friendly. You could walk you can't you really, really can't walk to wherever you wanna go. Can't do that here. I mean I'm here, let me uh let me double check this. So, you should be able to see my cursor. I mean, if I wanted to, if I say I wanted to walk from from one of these houses here to here, despite it being, you know, the quickest way between two points is a straight line. I would, it would actually be safer and probably quicker to just hop in my car and go ahead and, you know, just drive from here to here. You know, I mean, just this, just this big, uh, this big street alone makes it too dangerous. I mean, he, even here at the stoplight, it, to me, it's still dangerous. I would just soon as take a car and drive over. I mean, because I don't trust the, um, I don't trust the walk, don't walk lights. Because, uh, not everybody follows them. I mean, I've had that happen several times throughout my life here. The walk signal's on. But yet, some ch some asshole, they'll go ahead and make the right turn right in front of you anyway. You know, which is which is totally illegal. So, I mean, technically it's illegal, I should say. But you know, I again, again, I don't, I don't trust, I don't trust these streets. So, so again, I mean, even something like this, just to go from fucked it up, I fucked it up. I fucked it up. Hold on. Okay, there we go. Okay, but but anyway. But yeah, it's about. I mean, but he was complaining about. He was complaining about exactly the same thing. I mean, look at all this wasted space. And um. And um. You know, and telling me, well, there's a lot of cars here. There's a lot of cars in this parking lot too. I mean, it looks like uh, how would you make then? How else would you make the? How else would you make the space then, Joe, to accommodate all these people? Um, probably the same way they did it back in the day. Uh, double deck them, cause uh, you know, cause all the, you know, all these shops here. I mean, you're pretty sure you probably have it in like the, the main streets where around where you live. They're Basically, uh, town hall and duplexes, you know, the people that run the shops on the lower level live on the upper level. You know, that's saving a lot of space right there, and best of all, they ain't got to walk to work. They just got to go downstairs. You know, so that could save you a ton of space. And, uh, and I forgot to, again, it slipped my mind, but if I would have remembered to, I would have uh, found some photos of, um, of the Netherlands where this guy lives. And, um, posted them on here too because um because the way uh the way the netherlands the, the netherlands is set up everything you need here is all gonna be is all gonna be uh crammed right along the road you ain't gonna need all the you ain't gonna need to waste all this space everything everything you uh, everything you have here could have easily been condensed down Right along the sides of the road, and you don't need all this road space. I think just just a two lane just a two lane road is all you need. Um, and again, if someone were to ask, well, then uh, how, what what's everybody else gonna do if you're just gonna shorten everything down to from six lanes to two lanes? Um, it's kind of a it's kind of a weird paradox, but um, what um one answer I got comes from my job Walmart um for a time at the at the first Walmart I worked at I worked at two different ones my old one and the current one I work at but the old one I used to work at had um had two microwaves and everybody in or at least half the night crew would go to would take their breaks and lunches at the same time and then um the other half of the crew would take their breaks and lunches at a different time 
but there was only like two time slots for breaks and lunches. So what would end up happening is, uh, you know, people would, uh, a whole bunch of people would come back there, come back there with their food that they have to microwave, you know, pretty much uh, basically causing a log jam, causing everybody to wait behind the person that's trying to, you know, cook their meal. Everybody else has to wait on him, and it's basically a waiting list. Or it's ba it basically is a queue line to get to the microwaves, two of them. Um, well, what ended up happening, well, and then you get this, um, you get this one asshole who comes in with their, with his, like, 15-minute Salisbury steak uh, platter, or Salisbury steak entree that takes 15 minutes to cook. He gets in there, throws his in, totally log jamming everybody else. Everybody's having to wait on this one guy, or, or best case scenario, having to wait on this other microwave over here. You know, now the line's even longer because he's, you know, you guys, you guys get what I'm saying. But um, what what people started, what people started doing though, is um, they would start off uh, putting their, they would start putting their like little burrito or their little, no, not not a chicken, not chicken Popeyes. Those take a while too, but you know, like their little little hamburger that they have to reheat or their little burrito that they have to cook up, you know, like 30 seconds, 60 seconds. Um, people were taking their, their stuff and putting them in the same microwave as a guy who's got the 15-minute Salisbury steak. You know, so now, Mr. Salisbury steak here, his food ain't getting cooked all the way because he got other people sitting there putting their stuff in along with his. Now, now again, there's a paradox to this. You would think the answer to this would be to add another microwave in there. But nope, that's act. That's actually putting out a fire with gasoline, and I know. And I know this because I've I've seen it happen. Um, you know, you got again, you you know, you got these long lines of people waiting to use the microwave. Other people are actually starting to are starting to smarten up, and not buy food that requires a microwave. They're having you know they're having to buy you know, they're. Or how. Uh, they're buying, I want to say dry food. You know, like maybe buying cereal or something. You know, buying some cereal and putting some milk in, you know, buying some cereal and milk and, you know, putting the milk in the refrigerator because there's, you know, plenty of space for that. You know, they're they're finding alternatives to having to stand in line and wait in the damn microwave. Now, what's got, now what happened, now what happened here is, uh, they went ahead and they added in a third microwave. Yay! Yay! You know, but again, paradoxically, you would think that there would be a there would be less of a wait. Nope. Again, it's the herd mentality. It's the sheeple. Everybody's sick of the same thing. Everybody's clapping and cheering. Yay! We got another microwave. Yay! Now I can bring up my pot roast from home and I can cook that because now we have another microwave. Or everybody's bringing in their extra food because now they have an extra microwave. I there's probably a technical name for it, but I just call it. I just call it a paradox, I guess. Maybe the sheeple paradox, I guess. I'd probably call it, it it's a herd mentality. Again, everybody thinking the same thing. Another microwave. No, everybody brings in their own extra food. Which which actually clutters, you know, probably clutters things up even more. Because now you basically have three lines. Three Q lines of people waiting to use the microwave. I had the solution long before then. Instead of adding a microwave, take away a microwave. Only have one. Again, this is going to force people to find alternatives. Or, or if that asshole comes in with his 30-minute London broil steak or, you know, something like that. Now, we definitely have every right to, like, throw our 30-second, you know, 30-second, 60-second meal. We, have, we definitely have every right to put, put our stuff in there. And, you know, Mr. London Broil guy is probably getting pissed off now because his food's not getting cooked all the way because, you know, he decided to go ahead and throw his in there first before everybody else can get theirs in there. So now, so now it's him that's, whose food's not getting cooked all the way because, oh, you know, opening the door, closing the door, opening the door, closing the door, back and forth, everybody putting theirs in. You know, so, 
again, now you only have one microwave in there, everybody's, it forces everyone to try to find alternatives. Or everybody, you know, everybody learns to cooperate. And I, I think I see, now that I think about it, yes, I've seen this before too. People sharing the microwave. You know, you got two or more people. You know, one guy puts his burrito in there, another guy puts his cup of noodles in there, Raymond noodles. You know, they got two or three people in there sharing a microwave. You know, people are finding alternatives to this issue. <sighs> okay, so that might have sounded like I went off on a tangent here, but that same experience I had can translate to here. And in fact, um, I think city planners mentioned the same thing too. It's kind of a it's kind of a road paradox. More lanes actually means more traffic, because again, it's the herd mentality. People are generally, people in general are jackasses. You know, they, you know, in fact, it's going, I think it's going on right around where I live too. They're widening the roads. You know, everybody, you know, everybody in my hometown is all clapping and cheering. Yay! Wider roads, yippee! And now, and now, you know, now I don't have to find an alternate road. Now I don't have to carpool. I can take this wider road. Yay! Everybody's thinking that, and now because of that, Tra and traffic's just as bad, if not worse, because now everybody's hopping on, everybody's hopping on the roads, you know. So, so again, crazy as it might sound, the alternative is actually narrowing the roads, not widening them. I mean, you want to solve the crowding, you know. If you think, um, if you think taking away these parking lots might actually cause cause an issue nope people will find a way and again it, it it can go you know it can go back to finding you know finding you know better alternatives like I said sharing the microwave you know you don't need you don't need the whole entire microwave to yourself when all you're gonna make is just a burrito same principle here I mean if you if as an example if you live in like this this big housing area over here you ain't gonna need to take a car you're not gonna need to take a car all the way over here I mean in you know in this picture here yeah of course you're gonna need to I mean because look at you know because the way it's designed you have you pretty much have to take a car to, to work to go to get where you want to go and this the not just bikes guy he calls this car dependent suburbia you need a car to get from point A to point B in it when a city's laid out like this. But if you look at one if you look at those old school towns where all there was was just two lanes of road. You know, and where uh you didn't have the kind of shops that you have here. I mean I mean in the store I worked, I in the Walmarts that I've worked at, there's a lot of wasted space. I mean they're big box stores. They're they're like the roof is like 50 feet high. That's a lot of wasted space there. I mean, you could easily have added a second floor there. I don't know. Um, I don't know what the uh, what the building codes are, but I mean, I mean, that's these things. These suckers are huge. You could probably have added a second floor. You know, you probably could have consolidated a good chunk of the space into maybe possibly maybe even like one building if they if they. If they really knew how to make it work, you could probably have crammed all this here into one building. Same thing here. You probably could have crammed all this stuff here into one building. In fact, um, where I live, I can think of it right now. It's a, it's a small office building. The, I mean, the rooms are small and tiny, but you can cram a lot of businesses in there. Um, in fact, we're uh, Hang on just a second. I got I got to take a drink. I'm talking myself hoarse right now. But yeah, we're up uh, um, all state where I pay my car insurance. It's in one of these small tiny office buildings. Uh, it's on it's on Main Street. You can, there's like if I had a, if I had a venture guess, there's probably about 10 businesses. I mean, they might be small businesses, but still. I mean, they're small businesses that cater to the city I live in. So it doesn't need to be, it, 
It doesn't need to be massive or anything. So yeah, you, cram, you can cram 10 businesses in this little tiny building. That's saving a lot of space right there. As well as, say, you know, and um, great, you know, greatly reducing the carbon footprint, for lack of a better phrase. You know, you know, reducing, you know, reducing the impact you have on Mother Nature. You know, making, you know, buildings that small. So once again, I mean, a lot of the spaces here are wasted. And, and once again, sorry to sound like a broken record. If you want to, if you want to solve this dilemma, you actually want to reduce the space, not increase it. Again, that's putting out a fire with gasoline. And I, and uh, I saved another image here too. So let me um, let me go to work on that. So this is gonna go black for a bit. So now let me go here. And once again, this is Houston. Damn, this is sounding pretty cool, actually, this music. And same thing here. Um, this is another part of Houston. And um, this video that I saw, um, part of the part of the title is and why I hate Houston. And you're you're pretty much looking at it right here. I mean, what a clusterfuck this is. Now, to be fair. If this was, um, if this kind of highway was way out in the middle of nowhere, like there are no other cities around, and there are, I mean, there are interstates that are like this. I mean, I've done a lot, I mean, I haven't done near the extent of traveling that this guy has, but I mean, I've, I've done, I've done some traveling here and there, you know, so these kind of streets are out there and they do make sense. Like, again, when they're in between cities, when there's like, there's like, when there's nothing like this around, then yeah, these kind of sh these kind of uh, streets make sense. But I mean, not in an not in an area like this when there's already like clumps of cities and whatnot around here. I mean, you could, you could only imagine what you'd have to do. Like if if say, excuse me, let's just say, I mean, look for a house or something. Let's just say in these trees here, and again, let me check this. I want to say that um I have the cursor turned on in here. Okay. I'm really hoping that um you guys can see my cursor, but let's just say somewhere in these trees here, there's a housing division. Let's just say if you wanted to get, go from this house to say this office building here, you know, you would think that not not too long of a walk. Nope. But nope. You have to basically get in your car. You gotta drive. You got, and you have to mess with whatever amount of stoplights that are from here to this. I'm assuming there. I'm gonna assume for a moment that there's a bridge that goes over this highway here, and you gotta wait here at the stoplight, however long that's gonna take. And that also assumes that uh, there's not a whole bunch of other cars here either. And again, there's. There might be a stoplight right here at the halfway point. You never know. And there's probably going to be a stoplight and another big clusterfuck right over here. You know, basically, theoretically, you probably could have walked. You probably could have just walked from here to, to this office building here. And the time it would have taken for you to actually driven, get in your car and drive across. You could have just walked across, theoretically, faster than driving. But again, you know. But again, you don't want to walk through something like this. No freaking way. Way too dangerous. And that was something else I forgot to mention too. About that other image. That uh, Areas like that are very dangerous to walk. In fact, um, in this video, he actually, um, I think he body cammed himself. Walking from point A to point B. And where he, to get where he was going, there were very few sidewalks. And even though the sidewalks that he walked on were right next to the were right next to the road, right on the side of the road, 
In fact, it even showed him uh, walking across a bridge. There was like maybe a... The sidewalk that he walked on was just barely the width of his body. And it was, a, it was on a bridge. And again, right next to a road. I mean, cars are passing by him like within a few feet of him. So you can only imagine how dangerous that would be. And that's just him walking on the side of the road, not into the road itself. So, yeah. So that's something else I forgot to mention, too. Safety. Um, where this guy currently lives now, the Netherlands. I mean, he's showing footage of it. That place is very, very safe. And it's very walk-friendly, too. Um, 90% of the time, you don't need a car to get to where you're going. Um, in fact, now that I think about it, growing up as a kid, um, in the 80s, where I lived, um, I think it was uh, Northeast Minneapolis, was a bright, shiny example of the kind of, was almost, a, was almost like the Netherlands. I, um, I pretty, I mean, I was a kid back then. I mean, so I didn't own a car. But man, even back then, I could, I could have walked to everywhere I, I could have walked everywhere I went. You know, walk down to, Bur you know, walk to Burger King, and just walk across the street. I mean, I had to wait at a stoplight, but I mean, I didn't necessarily have to because the road was just two lanes, and that's it. Um, two lanes, and then I guess um, I, I want to say two and a half, maybe, uh, two lanes, and then you can park your car. You can park cars. You can parallel park on the sides of the on the sides of that street. But as for the actual traffic itself, it was only two lanes, so you didn't need to go down to a stop. You could just you could jaywalk. It wasn't that dangerous. Not I mean definitely not like here. I mean you again you basically have to drive to get to where you want to go, and that's it. And that's for that's um and that's for safety reasons more than anything else. So. So yeah, it's not like these days. But yeah, that but watching that video though, watching that video though really touched a nerve. And also now <laughs> and now that I think about it, um a lot of fighting games and a lot of fighting gamers, um people in the FGC, the fighting game community, they often um one of the biggest buzzwords in the uh, FGC is adapt as in adapt to your opponent or you know adapt you know instead of complaining about buffs and nerfs oh no my character got nerfed adapt you know adapt you know adapt to your character you know basically make it work i think um people in the fgc would be some great city planners i mean again if again the big buzzword in the fgc is adapt so, I mean, like I said, they'd be some awesome city planners because, you know, they wouldn't be, uh, they wouldn't be solving their problems by buffing the space and nerfing mother, you know, buffing the parking lot space and nerfing mother nature. You know, they want to be, they want to be buffing the space and, uh, buffing the space in a building. No, they'd adapt, you know, they, if there was an issue, they'd just make it work, you know. Again, they wouldn't be putting out no fire with gasoline, so... Uh, yeah. And, um, there was also a third image that I wanted to show, but, uh, I'm, I'm kind of running a little over long here. I'm almost, uh, I'm almost at 30 minutes now, so, but I'll just go ahead and show it anyway. Screen's gonna go black. So, let me show the next one. Uh-oh. Okay, there we go. Yeah, here is the third one, but uh this is I'm not gonna be on this image here for very much longer. But um and uh the, the not just bikes guy, I don't know his real name, but um he um I think he read a book called called Strong Towns. I actually did uh talk about this in one of my earlier casts. But um what you're looking at here is what's called a strode. It's kind of a hybrid of a road and a street. Like a, a street itself is, as an example, 
Something you can see in the inner city, like downtown, like a kind of like a two-lane road. No, or, or a two-lane street. Um, and then a road would be something like a big highway, like a big interstate. That's a road. But, but um, a street is something you'd see, like in, in a downtown or an inner city, that kind of thing, where uh, you know where a whole lot of buildings and whatnot are connected to it. And then again, a road would be something like a highway interstate, where there's uh no no buildings, no real form of civilization around. Um, and then. Again, this here, what you're seeing, is called a strode. Part street, part road. Um, they're basically, a strode is trying to mix oil and water, is what it's trying to do. This is what I have around where I live. And it's where, um, it's, it's one of those situations where I don't, if I gotta go somewhere, especially during peak hours, I basically have to take my car. Even though, despite the fact that it would actually take me longer, by car than it would be by walking. I still take a car anyway because it's safer. Like, like going across the street to the convenience store. I won't go. I won't walk during peak hours. I only go there like during the late evening when there's not as many cars out. So, but again, what you're looking at here is a strode. Because I mean, I mean, you got a four-lane highway here. You got two lanes of street here. And this is what he was talking about here. If you could tell by looking, see the sidewalk? Well, I was going to try to keep this short, but see the sidewalk? Look where it's at. Right next to a right next to a road where there's cars going up and down. And if any of these drivers are drunk, you're up the creek without a paddle. You might as well stick your head between your legs and kiss your ass goodbye because you're getting run over. You know, drunk driver just kind of veer up into the sidewalk. <laughs> squish, squish. But yeah, I, he's, he was saying the same thing too. I mean, this is uh, this is actually dangerous right here. All these buildings, and you got um. Well, to their credit, at least this part here. At least they have a a little two laner here. A little two laner here, so presumably cars are going slower, but still, not. I mean, it's not completely safe. Might be safer. I mean, cause you know, cause you gotta pull out. Cause you gotta pull out of here into this driveway, and you really gotta be super. You gotta be super aware and careful that there's no car, that there's no cars coming by. You know, same thing here too, and. How this would work anyway? I think this is probably this is yeah. These have got to be one-way roads. Like you can only you can only make a right turn. But again, mm, probably a probably a safer area, but not completely safe. Now you can only imagine what somebody has to go through up here in this driveway. In fact, you can kind of see it right here too. This car. I'm hope and I'm real hoping you guys can see my pointer arrow. Man, he's gonna have a dangerous time of it right here. Again, if, there, if any of these drivers are drunk, he's screwed. They're gonna end up plowing right into him. It's gonna look like a damn Russian car crash video. <gasps> Why you man? But, but yeah. But alrighty, um. Yeah, I wasn't expecting the wasn't expecting this cast to last this long, but but yeah, I was on a roll, baby. But otherwise, um, I do believe I've said all the things I wanted to say today, so I'll just go ahead and cut it off here. Um, but especially if you made it this far, thanks um thanks a bunch for uh, listening or thanks a bunch for tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that, and um I should be able to do another one of these tomorrow morning. So, but until then. Thanks again for dropping by, everybody, and see you all next time. Take care.